Music was always on my mind, always on my mind. One day I was piling wood, stove wood, about a foot long, that came from the mill, sawmill, and some of it was hardwood. It was little hardwood squares, about an inch square, and about a foot and a half long, a foot long. And I remember laying some of them down across two other ones and playing the first part of In the Mood with another one. Do, 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 <laughs> While I was piling this wood. I can't stop loving you so long ago. Still make me go. They say that time. Dad didn't have a whole lot of money, but when it came to Christmas, he he did what he could. Uh, First the first instrument I had was a harmonica my cousin gave me when I was seven years old. I learned to play that. And the first instrument my father bought me it was a guitar. And then a few years later he bought me a better guitar at Christmas. And uh, I remember finding it before Christmas. <laughs> finding it out in the woodshed, <laughs> in, a, in a box, of course. I didn't let on. The life I love is making music with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. But uh, that's how I got my instruments. And then when I got old enough, uh, I bought my own. A sugar beet factory over in Maine uh, was dumping effluent from the factory into the stream, the Presteel stream, and it was killing all the fish. And uh, I wrote a song about it. It was called Pollution. So I went down to the radio station one day and met with Bob Morrison, and he remembered me. Of course, he was there the night of that incident in Centerville. And I asked him if he, uh, if he had any work. And he said, what do you do? And I said, accounting. And he said, yes, when can you start? I said, well, tomorrow. Yeah, and that's the place to be when it's 70 degrees. Sunny clouding over this afternoon, a few showers on Wednesday. And one of the guys who did the afternoon shift, the country shift, from one to three, uh, after I was there a little while, left. So I was controller, but I, I was so-called sitting in. Well, the sitting in lasted for, it had to be 11, 12 years. And that's how I got into radio. And I just loved it so much. I loved country music so much. And it was, I was at the radio station for 23 and a half years and retired from that. In the meantime, I had bought the radio station. I was controller, then I became general manager and I bought the radio station, and uh, I managed it for the Fredericton group that I sold it to. I managed it for two years, and my contract was up, and they asked me if I wanted to stay, and I thought, after 23 and a half years, I think it's just about time to retire. Oh, so I did. Oh, Johnny Bucker was a gay old bugger, and a gay old bugger was gay. Had a very bad leg. Uh, the first album I released was in 1975, and that was the one with the Bricklin on it, which was a single, which went to number 17 uh, on, the, on the Canadian country charts at the time. It was back in 75. Some political satire songs. The, the Bricklin, of course, was a political satire song. 
My first acquaintance with Charlie was when I went to Charlie's and Marion's wedding. And uh, then as we got to know each other better, our, our paths were always crossing and with the music industry. And Charlie and I started playing dances at that time for the nurses' dance, and we'd been, well, we played for 11 years, I think, after that, steady every week, sometimes three times a week. And uh, we had some real good times. We would uh, play uh, out in the outer areas of Woodstock, like we'd play Centerville or sometimes Canterbury, Heartland, any, any place where they needed a dance band. That's where we went. We were pretty flexible. Charlie was one of my biggest supporters, Charlie. Without Charlie, I wouldn't be where, I wouldn't have had the, the opportunities in my music that I have had. Charlie, Charlie being in the radio, he, uh, he, knew, he knew a lot of artists, he knew a lot of contacts, and uh, he was just a great supporter. And he still is. Charlie still, even today, he suggested that I take a CD to a radio station, so he's still thinking about me, you see? <laughs> I really, I'm really glad he, he moved to the Woodstock area from the Miramichi.